So welcome to the sixth episode of the Gutenberg Times Live Q&A. Today we have a world premiere. We have the three co-leads of Gutenberg um, for design and technical leads um, for the WordPress new publishing experience uh, in one show. So it's uh, Joanne Asmussen, Matthias Ventura and Tammy Lister. Um, so you started together, so you, uh, Joanne and, and Matthias started together at Gutenberg in uh, 2016, and then um, Johan went on maternity leave and handed over design uh, lead to Tammy in August um, of 2017. So thank you for taking the time, pulling away from all the release stress that you must have. And I'm glad you're here and all three able to make it on a Friday night. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Likewise, thanks for inviting us. So, um, yeah, we are streaming live also to YouTube and we will publish this in sometime in December, probably after WordCamp US, um, as a podcast also on demand and um, with show notes and this, we use the Zoom Q&A um, and let Tammy and Joe and I'll pick the questions, kind of I go through it and then ask the question and then um, either one of your answers or if you want to chime in um, with a second answer or a second comment or so, let's make this a, a, a informal um, way to do this. Um, topic wise, we, probably, we start out with the genesis of Gutenberg um, and how it came to pass in 2016. And I'll start off with a uh, but. First, I want to ask the, uh, Tammy and Joanne and Matthias to um, tell us a little bit more about yourselves. Where do you live? What are you doing for fun? And what did you do before Gutenberg in the WordPress community? Tammy, you want to start? Sure. Um, so before Gutenberg, uh, I was involved in lots of different things from buddy press to themes to design. So I'd been around a while. Uh, in the community. Uh, I live in uh, just kind of by Northampton in England. It's basically if you went like that and tried to hit the center of England, you'd get where I live. And um, what do I do? So I do yoga. I have a, an older dog that likes hugs. That's kind of cool. And I just, um, I don't, I live kind of a bit raw, so I kind of relax here. Thank you. Johan? Sure. I uh, live in Denmark in suburbia, maybe 45 minutes north of Copenhagen. I have two kids and a trampoline in the yard. And I've been using WordPress since version 1.2, actually. I switched to 1.2 from movable type because of a, a great post by Mark Pilgrim uh, made me switch. And I've, I've been a fan ever since. And here we are. And what did you do uh, um, immediately before you worked on the Gutenberg project? Whew. Oh, lots of different things. I'm generally in, in the design part of, of the world and I do lots of, of front end CSS and a little, you know, technical implementation of that. Um, I've been Gutenbergen for so long now. I, it, it's, a, it's a past life. I don't actually, actually recall what I was working on right before. Yeah, Matthias? <laughs> yes. Um, well, I, I am from Montevideo uh, in Uruguay, um, and I'm, but I'm living in Spain now, in Madrid. Um, I, I, I do all sort of things outside of uh, web development that I really like. I, I studied philosophy. I, I do filmmaking when I find the time. And I'm also, uh, I also like drawing and painting very much. Um, so it's, I, I got into sort of web development in a very uh, circumstantial way, just because I like uh, creating themes. Um, and that's, that's also my first involvement with WordPress is around themes. Um, my first big contribution to core was the 2011 theme. Um, oh, and then, I mean, I've been, I've been sort of swinging between design and development for a while. Uh, as I got it more into uh, JavaScript driven development. Uh, I work on the Calypso project in Automatic, uh, the 
redesign of the theme admin screen in WP admin. I think I was in like version 3.8 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then yes, I've been absorbed by this Gutenberg thing for the last couple of years with these fine folks. Yeah, and uh, I looked at GitHub, there are about 374 um, contributors to Gutenberg. So there's a, a, a huge army <laughs> <laughs> that um, works together and um, it's, it's very interesting how this all comes to pass. But uh, now WordPress 5.0 is coming out soon and your work, <laughs> and we are not answering the question when it will come out. <laughs> and your work as leads uh, for Gutenberg arrives at a big milestone. Um, your aim at it when you started out in 2016, but let's go back to the beginning. Matthias, uh, now I know when you said you, you study philosophy, I now know where the ship of Theseus blog post comes from. Um, <laughs> but in there, you wrote about the vision of Gutenberg. It's an attempt to improve how users interact with their content in a fundamentally visual way, while at the same time, give developers the tools to create more, more fulfilling experiences for the people they are helping. So for that, you and your team needed to rethink a lot about the underlying architecture for WordPress. So how did you and the other developers approach this wonderful task? And uh, take us through the phases, maybe, from the beginning. Keep in mind, we only have an hour. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll try to keep it short. Um, but in a way, I think that's also kind of uh, one of the core missions of WordPress. I mean, it's always been about the user experience and also allowing uh, developers and people building sites to extend it in ways that fulfill needs that we wouldn't even imagine in core. Like that's the way that WordPress has uh, grown, has been through the, the user experience and through the developers extending a very flexible platform. Um, at the same time, I think the, um, the, the experiment around post formats uh, started showing that the way that people wanted to express on the web was also evolving, uh, probably at a faster rate that WordPress, the software was evolving. Uh, so that means people wanted to do things that weren't very, weren't becoming very easy to do. Uh, and I mean, we, we had some tools like shortcodes, which is to sort of build the page, but it was uh, growing further apart from uh, that visual connection from the user. Um, and it's been like WordPress has done multiple sort of experiments around the customizer post formats to try to to, to close that gap. Uh, but I think after the the post format war, there was a sort of a consensus in the community that the flexibility of WordPress was even greater than what post formats allowed. Uh, so it would be like post formats would say, okay, what sort of content you want to create? And that's, some, that's a choice that you make before creating the content. And the sort of realization was that people were, were mixing different content types all the time. Like you wanted to write a post and mix an embed and then show a quote and, and sort of this more flexible experience sort of led to say, well, maybe it's not post formats that we need, but we need just to have a lot of little content blocks within the post. Um, and that's, I think that goes back all the way to like 2012 or 13. Um, and then once uh, once it was announced that the editor was going to be a focus, the, the approach was to try to figure out how we could introduce this notion of content blocks on a platform that's already like 30% of the web with millions of users, millions of, uh, content already created, how can it be introduced in a way that's, um, that both changes the platform towards the direction that we want to go, but also makes as smooth a transition as possible. Um, and so it, it also made sense to focus on the editor first because it was both a more contained experience and also the challenges were greater in a way because you had to you had to respect the writing flows. You couldn't just bring content blocks in the picture. Um, so it was a way to start in a sort of contained environment that exposed a lot of the challenges and would allow us to build from there towards like a full site building experience and the rest of the phases, so to speak. Um, 
So I think that's a kind of a, a summary. I don't want to go too much into it so that we can leave room for other questions, but. Um, if, if I can briefly elaborate on the post formats thing Matthias mentioned, because I, I worked on uh, 2013, a theme that was supposed to um, showcase the post formats that were going into WordPress 3.6. But um, famously or infamously, those, the, the, the UI for post formats was pulled out at the last minute, which was the correct decision, by the way, uh, because it just wasn't compelling enough. The, the, the challenge was, I really like how this video post format looks, but I want to use it in my standard post. Why can't I do that? And that was one of the first seeds of, of the block concept where what if it's a block, you can just insert it as a block. And if you have just one block, well, it's the same as having a post format, but you just have the flexibility of piecing together more of those together. So that's, that's part of when we all started thinking about blocks as the atomic unit to build the whole thing around. Yeah, but that brings also the question that your, your design team that you started out with started from a very blank, blank slate pretty much. And so uh, did you do any research or for the first prototypes? And what did you learn from the first usability tests that you did? I think in April where the first prototype came out in February, 2017, and then the prototype in April, I think. Uh, the, and then the usability tests in April, sorry, yeah. Yeah, the prototyping phase was, was, was fun. Um, uh, it, definitely at the prototype phase, we started looking at mostly the uh, block unit itself and not so much the editor context around it because at that point, we were still exploring how the full thing should should piece should work together and and we but we knew that the block was going to be the important thing so for the prototype we focused just on the the editing canvas the content and we had two prototypes one which was sort of the uh, single instance approach and one which was the multi instance approach um, in in one approach you insert blocks inside the flow of the text whereas in the other approach every single piece of of uh, content you insert is a block on its own um, we worked on those prototypes for months on end to make sure we made the right decision and part of uh, the right decision was made based on the user testing which showed that i, I imagine tammy can also uh, speak a little to that you did a lot of the testing as well um, largely, the, they were both uh, functioning fairly well. However, there were pros and cons to both approaches. One of the pros of separating at the block level was that we could make a much more resilient experience where, for example, the example Matthias kept, kept really focusing on was that if you inserted an image and added a caption, and then selected from the caption and into the next image or next text block, perhaps to delete part of the caption, the whole thing might explode and you might have a, an image block with some uh, tag soup around it and uh, part of a text block and, and it, it would quickly get messy. Whereas in the other approach, that was completely resilient and, and mm -hmm. sandboxed to each of them. And so we, we had to sort of make a, make a trade-off between those two approaches. Plug, plugins could more easily tap into the second approach, the multi-instance approach. And we also knew that because the block was so critically important to the, the, the whole experience, they had to function or it, it wouldn't scale. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and that scaling also, also also matter for like uh, something like phase two like we could have built it in the other way uh, but it was going to very quickly get into a very complicated situation for the next phases so it, i think it was worth the the challenges around making the because then a lot of the development work ended up going into how can we make the process of navigating between blocks fluid and and smooth um that required a lot of a lot of effort to to polish, but I think it was worth in the 
uh, with the idea of preserving the integrity of each block, uh, which is what Joan mentioned. Uh, Tammy, you were, you were doing the, the usability test, as uh, Johan said. Um, do you have anything to... That you so, want to I mean, we, we've been doing testing throughout. We've done different variations throughout, um, and we've done got numerous different types of feedback. Um, the best way that I see it is we've been taking temperature throughout. This is the best approach. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's always been really interesting to get and, I, and it's guided the feedback. I don't really have anything specific to add on the prototype, mm -hmm. um, but I feel that there's been times that it's definitely proved and disproved things as we've gone along. The biggest one we had was when we did last WordCamp US. I'm trying to cast my mind back. I think it was last year um, when we had mm -hmm. lots and lots of testing happening there. That, that was a really good way of just getting a gauge of where we were, what we were doing. And um, that kind of has happened. There's been a lot of people doing their work camps and giving us that feedback as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you took over Design Lead when the Gutenberg plugin was already out for two months um, and has been available yeah, since then for testing and now getting into um, the WordPress 5.0. Uh, what did you see as your main area to work in with the de design team after it, it came out? Um, did you have any make any adjustments yeah. on the original ideas? Um, yeah, what was the a, a, yeah, original vision and from the prototypes? So throughout, I've always wanted to maintain the, the kind of original vision. I think it's really important if a design is set out on a particular path, it can be iterated, but there, and by having Jürgen come in and continue to work, that enabled the, the same hand is the best way I can describe it. So that the, the, the finished project of Gutenberg has that same, or phase one of Gutenberg has that same uh, feeling throughout. And I think that's really, really important from something that comes from this genesis to have that. And that was one of the core things I wanted to do. We, we have very different design skills and very different um, approaches. So I think it was really good to have that and been able to kind of have both of us has been really uh, strong and able to kind of combine like transformer style. I'm not describing with transformers, but yeah, <laughs> to, to be able to do that, I think that's been really helpful going. I think iteration has been the, the theme I felt of the work I've done. So making sure that respond, iterate, and just really get it out there. It was pretty fully formed by the time I kind of took over as design lead, or at least the, the seed was shooting and very, very formed. So it's just about really just iterating there. And that's gonna happen for the next design leads. We're gonna do exactly the same thing. Um, that's the bit I'm super excited about is when my hand is taken by different people and, and we have this chain of people that have just been able to kind of lead this project. So we have now, um, and thank you, we have for, for, from four people, we have um, a few questions or from three people actually. So, um, and we, we can just use it, uh, do it from the top and we have a fifth one. And I also got via Twitter, uh, one question and um, four questions from one person via email. So I'm gonna just throw them at you. Um, so first I wanna uh, uh, read with Simon Atiba uh, and thank you so much for joining us, Simon. Um, he's the publisher of todaynewsafrica.com uh, from Washington DC. And he, he writes, thanks Matthias and the rest of the team for the great work you're doing. I was among the earliest to implement Gutenberg on our site and it's already running WordPress 5.0. I have one question. Uh, is it possible to make the more block function in posts, not just uh, in posts, not just on pages? And can you add a block for display of PDF documents? So um, Simon is a publisher. Um, yeah, he gets news out multiple uh, times a day. I know from him because he was on one of our earlier shows that he has a team of 15 people. So who wants to take that? I, I can answer the PDF aspect. There, there is a file block which you could use um, and, and simply link to the PDF there. It gives you a nice button and a link and, and that, that works pretty well. However, I would also encourage you to consider writing your own block because I imagine you can make a really cool little with a snippet or excerpt and description and, and I think that could be a great block and, and please share that if you do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think there's like uh, showing a, a PDF as an embed could also be interesting if, if someone wants to explore that. Yeah, I think there's a real yeah. need for that. I hear this question yeah. also from a few nonprofit. Um, he also mentions the more block. Um, yes, I. Yeah. So I, if if it refers to the to the 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 more block should work both in post and pages. Um, the likewise with the the like the next page block, uh, they should be working. So if so, um, uh, th there might be some some compatibility issue with the theme or or maybe even pot potentially a bug, but it should be working on on post as well. Um, oh, yeah. The only limitation is that you can only add one of them. Uh, Per post, and um, I'm I'm a little bit um, confused about the more block. Uh, normally, it would if you put it in a post, then on the summary pages, it will only uh, display what's on top of more more, um, but yeah. it will not be uh, rendered on the single post template, does it? That it kind of you have yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. You have on the top something, and then you could put something underneath, and then say, "Okay, the next thing is underneath." That kind of separation is not available, right? In the, on on the, the single post would uh, generally show it entirely, okay. unless the theme is doing some specific uh, work to it. Okay. Um, right. And yeah, the the index pages again, the index pages depends on how the theme is set up. Sometimes it's not set up to to break it on the on the more tag. I think it's also, it, it can affect like our CSS feeds and a few other contexts. Right, right. yes, yes, that's the summary part, yes, yeah. So, and the next question is from Joshua, Joshua Bold, and um, it gets a little bit outside of the history that we just kind of talked about or the implementation is, what are your most, what are you most excited about tackling in the next phase of Gutenberg? So, Tammy, you want to tackle that? Ah, so I'm, I think I kind of mentioned it before, I'm really excited to see what the new, the next leads do with Gutenberg. That, that to me is where one of the aspects of WordPress is going to be really exciting. And when Gutenberg goes away from this little editor and then starts kind of seeing where it explores, but really that, that to me is the exciting thing. I would also echo that and suggest that this whole foundation that Gutenberg, this version is, it's, it's, um, it's good on its own. There are a lot of features that are great, but the things that are already possible with the blocks is what I am excited to see for the next phase. Um, I've recently seen some tweets with some experiments where you could like put a, a, a block on the background and position it behind this and that. And there's some really cool features already. Um, that really shows the potential that Gutenberg has once it's been out in the world for a while. That's what I'm very excited to see. And by the way, Joshua, thank you for all your work on, on Gutenberg. Yeah. Your contributions have been yeah. great so far. Yeah, yeah I think uh, like seeing the sort of creativity that the community is showing is going to be to only grow as we get into the next phases. Um, I think if there's anything that um, that, that at least uh, excites me about the, the next part is that we're already seeing people sort of um, really be able to express themselves within the editor, but then as soon as they want to, I, they also want to interact in that way with elements that are outside the post. And that's right now creating a lot of friction. It even leads into the whole uh, idea around meta boxes because there are these elements that don't fall in the post, but are outside the post and they don't get the same reach and visual experience that the post currently gets. Uh, so I'm excited about getting there uh, as soon as possible to see what the whole community can build with it. Yeah, speaking of meta boxes, um, Stephen Vaughan had a, has a question. He has a lot of comments um, uh, in the Q and A, but it practically is that he um, meta boxes tend to be pushed to the bottom of the browser window. Sometimes they get to the advance up uh, to to advance up in the screen. Um, but if you add any block, um, if you hadn't added any blocks in the current editor, I configure for custom post types and fields using tool set. I usually disable the default editor and arrange the fields groups in a 
in a way that suits my workflow. I can also move the featured image settings to the top below the title. And when it's um, yeah, kind of organized the, the editing screen differently, then um, um, and that flexibility is not there. The, the, his question is, um, are there plans or what plans do you got to uh, do you have to give the block editor this amount of flexibility? Yeah, I think this is a great question. I, I think it gets to the, like, in a way, Metaboxes were the predecessor of blocks in, in, in WordPress too. Um, the, one of the problems is that they don't reflect the actual hierarchy of things. And this comment gets to that. Like you could set up like the Metabox at the top so that it's a, a bit more intuitive for the user, but, the, but it's, uh, it's not a real, it is, you have to sort of replicate that order. If the user moves a Metabox, it doesn't affect uh, the display on the front. Uh, but in a way, it's, it's sort of the, the way the, that WordPress figure out how to deal with sort of these units of data that you want to have these boundaries across um, and, and let people edit certain aspects of it, but not everything, um, and still try to, uh, to make that understandable for the user. Um, I would say that uh, with blogs and with Gutenberg, you get, it's like the, the next expression of that idea is that um, I think there's sometimes there's a misconception that by letting the user edit across blogs, it's a much more fragile situation for the, like you don't get access to this structured data, but you can source data for blocks from anywhere you want in WordPress. You can have blocks that map to custom fields. You can have blocks that map to site options, to, to whatever sort of data you want. Uh, and you can also protect certain aspects of the, like uh, you can use templates to lock areas down so that you cannot move certain blocks around. Um, and this is only going to continue to improve in offering the necessary tools for developers to set up these kind of sites. Uh, but the whole idea is that the, the, the blocks are always faithful to the, to the final visual representation of the site so that the communication with the user, the user doesn't need training in understanding, oh, I need to edit this here to affect this other thing here in, in somewhere else in the page. Everything is, is contained. Um, so, but it's, um, um, that's really where right now it's the, like the integration of Metaboxes is a bit of an awkward stage because the, the main separation that Gutenberg wants to do is between everything that affects the rendering of the page goes in the page canvas and anything that's extremely meta to the pose like the Yoast panel, uh, some of the Jetpack features, like anything else uses the new plugin API. So you get this extra sidebar that's clearly not part of the content. Um, so the, I think this separation is very useful for the user. Hopefully in the next phases, as blocks can absorb other controls, like more meta boxes sort of lose their reason to be because they, they can be absorbed in blocks outside of the post. Right now you cannot, like some meta boxes can be absorbed in blocks, but not all of them because you need sometimes to control things outside of the post, including the feature image. Like right. the feature image should just become a block in the next phase. And then it just, um, it's obvious how it relates to the user. It's obvious how the interactions work. Uh, it would use the same sort of interactions that the image block has and, and all of those things. Um, well, so well, yeah, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a whole other topic there, and that's why kind of uh, Stephen, uh, thank you very much for. Um, I, mean, I just add it's... one thing: if if you have a site that's very tailored and it's working very well with your set of, of meta boxes as they are today, there's there's no shame in installing the classic editor. That yes. is currently the best experience for highly tailored meta box experiences. I I, I use did client work for many years before working on this project. And I would, I would do the same thing. And you can make a pretty good experience. If you need to install the classic editor, that's, that's what you gotta do. And that's, there, there's no shame in that. So the next question is from Bud Krause. Um, and thank you uh, everyone who um, takes the time to put the questions in. These are so wonderful uh, because if you have the question, I think hundreds of other people have the same question. So, but Kraus has the question, what plans do you have to make it easier to work with HTML? Right now, it's a pain. Okay, Tammy, take that. Yeah, I think there's, I have a kind of question back of this because what one person thinks is a pain, 
isn't necessarily what someone else does. So I think it's kind of important to think what, like there's lots of different people using WordPress. So um, the term I always use, which is a kind of me term, but is headspace. We have to kind of think outside our headspace. And actually now with Gutenberg, one of the real hitch points is that each block is individual. So if you do anything in that block, um, like you go in and do anything, it's safe. You can do something and it's safe, or you can do the thing that everybody who didn't know HTML was doing by adding a class and then causing pages to fall and different content to not, not kind of be invalid as a result of that. So there is already an easy, so what, that kind of is my question, like one person's easy isn't necessarily another person's easy. Yeah. Um, and that, but it's kind of important to kind of work out. Yeah. Well, um, yes, I would just add that uh, I, I believe recently was announced by Matt that Code Mirror has received a donation to improve some of the accessibility. I, for one, would love to see Code Mirror be included in the editing screen. So if you switch to the code editor, you, you get Code Mirror with tab indentation and line numbers and syntax highlighting, all that sort of stuff. I, I think that would be amazing. That would be very much amazing, yeah. And I just saw a, uh, also a, um, a, a blog passing by on Twitter that actually has um, also uh, syntax highlighting. What yes? Yeah. Now, I, I want to say that I think there are two main things that to me make the, the experience of working with HTML better. Uh, one is the, the fact that almost every blog allows you to edit only that block in HTML mode. So you don't have to sort of find the place in the, like before when you had to switch the entire editor, you had to find exactly what part of the HTML you wanted to focus in. Now you can just go and, and turn that block into HTML and edit it there. Uh, the other one I think that's very useful is the, the HTML block itself, that you can add it anywhere in the page if you need to do anything custom. Uh, and it, you can preview it in place. I think that's very flexible too. Um, I think the, there was a point where we had the, we had code mirror loading for that block, uh, but it was a bit heavy performance-wise and for accessibility, so it was disabled. Uh, but it should be coming back uh, in one of the next phases. Um, I think another aspect maybe of interacting with HTML is being able to extract some of the attributes uh, because sometimes you may not need to dive into the full HTML view, but you may want to add a class name or you may want to add an ID attribute. Uh, so having those fields per block exposed, I think would also help uh, the transition. Um, the idea I think is that it's not, it's not that you're either in HTML or either in blocks, but you have a more like a, a smoother run between like sometimes you, you want to, because dealing with media in HTML is not very intuitive. So maybe you want to keep some blocks in HTML, some you want to just see them visually. Like, and I think that flexibility is going to, to improve and help the process. One final thing, because this is such a great question. I would yeah. challenge anyone to try and copy some content from, from uh, Google Docs or something else, paste it in Gutenberg and be marvel that it doesn't implode. And when you do that, be sure to also try, go into the code editor, just paste a single div somewhere and then go back to the visual editor and note how it's also both sandboxed to wherever you paste pasted the div or other unclosed tag, but there's a resolve button that lets you diff what happened and, and why it, it might you know, be, be a broken experience to have that stray div. So the thing that I loathed the worst of visual editors back in the day, tag soup, we're, we're kind of handling a lot of the pain of that with Gutenberg. That, that, that's something the team has been building, which is just amazing. Can I add an add to the ad? Uh, one add of the things, the ad. <laughs> add to the ad. Uh, one of, a lot of the, the things that people wanted to do or had to do in code editing now is available in a blog, text colors, fonts, all these kind of things that you would even have had to do in a class or had to know or had to have that availability. So I think that also helps. It's a different kind of different people using WordPress, but the blocks themselves actually help by having more surfacing more of that capability and an interface that doesn't require you to have to know how to code as well. Yeah. Um, well, thank you.
Um, so uh, Mark Rood Wiley um, is from Seattle and um, hi Mark, <laughs> thanks. Uh, and he writes, thanks for all the work the three of you have done. How do you see the new emphasis on iteration being balanced with WordPress commitment to backwards compatibility in practice? Which part of the design and API be locked in by the launch of 5.0? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mark, for the question. That 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 that's a very good question. That it's not everything is is figured out on this front. Like there's a uh, the the process for Gutenberg has been very fast, and the deprecation strategy has been very aggressive, uh, precisely because we knew that once the time for 5.0 came. Uh, it was going to be uh, much much harder to change things. So, if we if we knew something wasn't working very well, uh, we had better to act soon before the the plugin was merged in core. Uh, so, I would say that the API is in a, in a in a place where we're pretty comfortable with what is shipping now. Um, at the same time, we do need to figure out ways to introduce new functionality that. We don't anticipate now um, also to revise certain design decisions that might have worked so far, but may not work in phase two. Uh, so we'll need to find ways to uh, either provide a layer of backward compatibility that, um, that, that it's sort of loaded when people are using older APIs, um, so, some, some kind of system like that. Um, I think the, the, the idea that blocks are sandbox is going to be very useful for this as well, because if um, even right now, if there's a, an issue with the code of a of a single block, uh, it it has the the capabilities of only breaking that block. Uh, so if it, that that should also give us way to uh, sort of load special deprecation mechanism for a given block, um, maybe probably expose this better to plugin authors. Uh, give better tools for migrating if we need to. Um, I, th I think it's going to be a very, it's, a, it's an area that's going to need a lot of thinking uh, from the whole community, uh, because it's also true that one difference with, uh, with JavaScript APIs uh, is that these are consumed by the user. So um, growing the, the amount of code that we ship to users uh, can end up impacting uh, the experience of everyone. So it's not the same. It, we cannot take the same approach that WordPress has taken uh, for PHP, where also arguably you you cannot just keep piling on code because it becomes a problem. But in the browser, it's it's arguably worse. Um, so it's and and also we have the advantage that browsers um, evolve faster than servers in terms of being able to run uh, latest APIs. Uh, so it's going to be a very, I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, process in yeah. going into the next year. But but for sure that it's not going to be the same pace that the plugin has shown because that's been merely because it was in development and trying to to figure out the best APIs before the merge. And it's yeah. a great question. Yeah, and I think it's a sigh of relief going through <laughs> at least this room said, okay, it's not every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I think a design has to iterate. I think like if we're moving away from the API as well, I think that's something um, I, I'm go going to speak purely from the design aspect, but a design has to iterate, has to respond different. Um, if we were still using a design that didn't iterate, we wouldn't be using one that worked on small screen devices. It, like we use uh, the experiences differently. So the design has to iterate. So I think that's important. and. Knowing um, the Metabox question is a good example, knowing the stress cases and what people are actually using Gutenberg for and then what they're creating with Gutenberg, that will then kind of influence going forward. But there, there has to kind of, it's a balance. Yeah. So uh, the next question is by uh, Michael Campanella. Campanella. Um, and he is wondering if there was a timeline post 5.0 to bring more styling options into the blocks that lack them. Uh, for, for example, a pull quote has a tons of styling available in the editor while the lists have none. Yes, I, I, I can take that. Um, I, I really like the style variations. They were added um, fairly late in the, in the process. It was one of the last features to be added. Um, 
but it sort of it solved a very a very clear problem that people wanted to make variations for a button, but they didn't want to create a whole new block for a button. Um, so it's it, that's how it started, um, and it sort of simplifies some cases like the. Um, we had the, the quote block had two different styles, like one was the, that was large and another one that was the more traditional one. Um, this also was absorbed in these style variations. Um, I would hope that almost every block has some of these. Um, I think we added to the table block too uh, at the end, but yeah, we, we basically ran out of time and, and we didn't have enough uh, sort of designers focusing on single blocks. Uh, which is also another thing I'm excited for phase two is getting, um, it's it's almost like every block could have its own release cycle. Like it mm -hmm. could be like they are, like just if you look at the gallery block, like that could have been an almost uh, a full release of WordPress, just focus on one of those blocks. So I think there's a lot of potential in the individual blocks and the style variations is a very good one for that because it, it gives a lot of, um, it allows the editor to be a bit more opinionated and integrate with the themes better too, because then if you offer these options and then also better integrations with themes, themes should be able to say, I want this variation to be the default and not the other one. Like there, there's a lot of, I think a lot of opportunities for better integrations there. Uh, but yeah, I would love to see them more like list this one that should have them so that you can change the um, the sort of the bullet point to be like a circle or a bullet or or an e like all of those things would be would be pretty cool. Um, I would if if people have ideas so of like they should also propose them in GitHub. Like it could be added uh, in the next in the following cycles at any point. I also think one of the first blocks that are likely to be added in the next phase is just a simple container block. Uh, and you could imagine having a text color and a background color in that container block that would then inherit down to any child block inside. Uh, so you could maybe make a little notice box or something on your page if you like. I, I would love to see that. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that actually uh, two or three block collections as plugins out there that um, solve that container, uh, but of course not in a standardized way yet. Um, so everybody has its own implementation somehow. Um, so next question is from um, Claire Brotherton and she sent it in via Twitter and said, I know the classic editor is being retired in 2022, but will the classic block remain in Gutenberg indefinitely? Yeah, there's a little bit of confusion out there. What's a yeah. classic block? I, I can I can take that. It's oh. it's it's a good question. Um, the because the it's true that right now we have there are two sort of classic editors. One is the plugin, and the, but there's also the classic block that handles any content that wasn't created in Gutenberg, and and that's always going to exist. Like Gutenberg needs to be able to handle content that doesn't look like a block. Uh, so something like the classic block, uh, that is a block that can handle any arbitrary HTML you throw at it in a visual way, uh, is always going to exist. Um, I am not sure if it's always going to be the classic block or even call that. At some point, it might evolve to be something else. But the, the need to handle content that hasn't been authored by Gutenberg is going to exist. Uh, so it will have to be handled in core. I would also suggest that the classic uh, editor is not necessarily being retired. Uh, I think what's what's been noted until now is that it will be officially supported for uh, until December 20, uh, 31st, 2021. So that's years from now. But one of the reasons I switched to WordPress in the first place was that open source, true, true GPL open source never really goes away. and. I don't think the classic editor, even if official support stops, necessarily is destroyed by a comet. I'm sure someone could fork it and, and continue to support it if, if they so liked. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, so I have two questions about page builders. Um, so some believe page builders should migrate from using the proprietary frameworks and modules to build customizers directly on Gutenberg blocks. Um, is this feasible? If you were a page builder like Divi or um, 
a beaver builder. So how would you adapt to Gutenberg? And um, I think um, your lead, of, uh, I think very early, you involved some of the page builder um, product uh, specialists. Um, yeah, would you please, yeah, what do you think? I can start with that. Um, yeah, this, I mean, um, this is, uh, this is an area where some of the, I think some of the page builders would adapt to uh, sort of start producing blocks rather than a separate page builder. I think other page builders would uh, remain as page builders because either uh, they have a different proposal for the user experience or they are approaching a different audience. Um, I think there's room for both. Uh, one of the main ideas and why we've also been in, in talks with all of them is that um, ideally we have a sort of a common, uh, a common infrastructure to all of this so that if you want to migrate from one to another, it's possible and the user is not locked in in terms of their content being proprietary to that, uh, to that builder. Um, that was also one of the, uh, I think the, the, the rise of the page builders is also showing a very clear user need for them. Uh, it has also paved the way for Gutenberg to, uh, to come to being because they've been at the front end of that, uh, solving those kind of needs. Um, so it's, um, I think it's, uh, it, it's going to depend on, on where a page builder wants to focus on. I think many of the page builders uh, evolved from, they were originally like more like theme companies. Uh, so it's, it, it's going to, and, and many of them are also more focused on something like what phase two is going to be doing. So it's not, uh, it's also not viable for them to adopt Gutenberg entirely at this point because they are they are reaching a slightly different audience at this point. Um, but also I think some page builder have, I think I saw Elementor having like a, um, a sort of a, like an Elementor block within Gutenberg. Like there, there's, that's the whole idea to be able to, to port this and, and also being able to load Gutenberg blocks in their own page builders. I think all of these interactions are going to be uh, very useful for the ecosystem, for the user and to, to keep uh, pushing things ahead. Um, but definitely I don't see page builders as mutually exclusive with Gutenberg. I see them as, as solving uh, similar problems and, and core sort of absorbing a lot of the architectural performance uh, needs that uh, so that the, the builders can focus on, on what they can do best too. It gives them a boost as well, like a foundation rather than having to work around the way that WordPress currently does things. WordPress is amazing, but it does things in a WordPressy way that mm -hmm. sometimes get in the way of doing some really incredible stuff or means that people have to really work around it to do their really incredible stuff. And this, the way that page builders have pushed what WordPress can do is kind of incredible within the confines. So Gutenberg gives that kind of turbo boost. And uh, we go back to, cause it's, blocks, Lego, right? Like it, more pieces to be able to come up with even better work. All right, uh, so uh, thank you. I really like that. Um, I have uh, one more question uh, from Gabe. Um, well, rewind to January 2017. How would you approach this project differently? If ever, <laughs> would you? That, that, that's a great question. I, I can go first, but I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, you're the philosophy major. Please uh, <laughs> yeah. go ahead on this one. Um, so I, I think one, one thing that uh, could have been approached better is around communication. Uh, I think the, there was a, in, especially in the first month, the, there was an issue in, in every, like we were saying, oh, we're redo, redoing the editor. And not everyone was understanding the same thing when we were saying editor. Um, like some people was only, uh, when they hear editor in WordPress, they were thinking of just the tiny MC window that you see in WP Admin. Um, whereas the reality was that we were focusing more on the full publishing experience that is at the whole post editing screen. Um, I think that was, a, I think that caused uh, issues that could have been solved with uh, better communication and clarifying some points better um, at the start. Um, outside of that, um, in the in the in the actual 
in the actual project itself, I think the 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 prototyping phase was very useful because it allowed us to validate certain certain aspects that in the end work very well. Um, so I, I wouldn't change anything from from that specific process. I, I would probably focus on on on, on better communication um, um, and something like that. I don't know if Yoen has something else to add there. Well, I have one one thing. It's a great question. It's also a very existential question. <laughs> one of the things that Gutenberg uh, was built on was the agile uh, methodology, where you 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 try something and you evaluate and then if it works you go with it or if it doesn't work you go back to the starting point and try a different approach take something like the block library the the, the one you see when you press the add block button in the top left corner that has gone through many iterations and it's it's if you look at some of the way early mockups it'll already look obsolete compared to what we have today which is Tammy's brainchild, by the way, beautiful result we have here. Um, and the agile methodology, when seen from outside, especially with, with the team that's been working so very, very fast on this stuff, it can seem almost reckless when, when you, you see trying something, then going back, trying something different, then going back. When in fact, the, the whole methodology is, is built around the idea that you, you have to try something and fail fast so you can do something better. And, and it, it's sort of an extra fast iteration where you reach the, the point where you know whether this approach is good or not faster. It's all about, because there are a million ways to build an editor, but there's only one way that's really good for WordPress. And you have to sort of explore this path and find out that wasn't the one. We cauterize this avenue. We go back in this path. And unless you really move fast, then, then, then it's not going to work. And I think we could have better explained how this process worked so it didn't appear as completely reckless where people would perhaps take some of the, the, the experiments as gospel before they had sort of solidified. Yeah, and just to add something quick to that, I think also the uh, the expectations around the, the scope are shaped by this perception too. Um, I, I often say that um, I think we ended up doing like phase 1.5 um, because the uh, the original scope didn't include many of the things that uh, we ended up shipping with, including uh, templates, uh, nested blocks, uh, reusable blocks, uh, columns even, like all of those things were not originally part of the uh, of the first phase uh, but it it became very clear especially last year around WordCamp US um, that it was very useful to get ahead and build some of these things so that the 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 overarching vision could be better communicated um, and and I think that was uh, that was a realization that happened um, very much in the middle of the process uh, that maybe couldn't have been anticipated but now in hindsight i think that um like trying to set those expectations or maybe uh, getting further ahead with the vision originally could have been useful at the same time i have to say that uh, a lot of the part of the iterative process that joan mentioned is that um, a lot of the things arise as you are working through them like the moment we added reusable blocks it was um, it was sort of like all the pieces fell in the right place and it made sense to do it at that point. Um, but it's like, it's not something that necessarily could have been planned at the beginning of the process because uh, it needed so many steps before to get there. Um, but, but I think there's something there to sort of reflect probably after uh, 5.0 happens as a community and figure out what sort of things in the process could have been improved, what sort of things work well, what sort of things allowed us to iterate in a, in a um, and find better solutions? What things created more uncertainty and anxiety in people? I think there's there's a whole spectrum there of of uh, of things to sort out and reflect on. I think I would plus one everything that's just been kind of said. Plus hundred. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I would also add. Uh, I mean, maybe it's a kind of wrap up on on that point. Is I really think there's been some seeds planted, whether those seeds grew fully into shoots or not. Uh, one example is uh, the research that started for 
phase two and the kind of awesome stuff that's kind of happening there. The fact that we have had uh, usability testing done in like WordCamp US, all these kind of things. The fact that we've had more designers involved. I would love to have seen even more designers and I'm hoping the next phase is see that just grow. Developers are amazing, but more designers being able to be involved in this process and enabled to be involved in the process, which I think is the, the kind of hook that we need to hear. Uh, yeah, I, and that's like there's, there's seeds around seeing as many of those grow in the next phases, I think is really, really important. So I think we have, um, thank you, um, Dad. That was a really good uh, uh, wrap up on, on that point. Uh, Brian D. Koning, um has um, um, a comment and a, and a question. So thank you to all three of you for being available for Q&A and to Birgit for hosting. All three of you work for Automatic and Matt Malovic is obviously the 5.0 release lead. While lots of people across the community have contributed to Gutenberg, the decision-making has been concentrated in one company, which is unusual for a WordPress team. But I'm not sure if you uh, follow that, but do you worry that the leadership team hasn't been sufficiently diverse and then follow up kind of in the next phase of the project? How do you see project leadership changing? Thanks, Brian, for the uh, question. It's certainly, I'm not sure if these are the right people to answer, but they can definitely <laughs> answer to that. Yes, go ahead. Um, who wants to go first? Automatic people. <laughs> I, I, I can go. I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a good question. Uh, it's a, um, I, I think that you can say that the, I think you can always push for more diversity. I think that's uh, that's also one of the reasons for um, like yeah, it's it's true. We have uh, like more than three hundred contributors in GitHub. The level of participation. Uh, probably thanks also to the GitHub platform has been um, has been great through the whole process. Uh, sometimes people point at the uh, staggering amount of issues as a, as a problem of, of readiness for the project, but I think it's also an uh, a, an indictment of the the amount of involvement from people and the the ease of participation that uh, that it also encourages. Um, in terms of in terms of leadership, I think that it's good that. Um, I know that it's been uh, like both Tammy and Yo and are, are from Automatic, but the fact that uh, leads can rotate, I think is is very useful and important. Uh, originally, phase two was going to be led by Weston, Router, and Mel, um, and Weston is not part of Automatic. Um, the I think they, I think it has to be. We really need, need to get to a point where Gutenberg is just a part of the community, so that different people can rise up and lead it. Um, and even though the the primary leads are not um, uh, are are from automatic right now, I think the there are many other leads in other areas of Gutenberg that are not from like in media. There's Anthony in in documentation in uh, around the REST API. That I think a lot of the community has uh, risen up to um, to sort of occupy those roles. Um, and yeah, I think it's uh, the more we move forward. Um, phase two, the next phases, like we should continue to encourage as much diversity as possible. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot say uh, too much outside of that. And I know that uh, I'm also from Automatic, so it's going to be coming from, from that place. Um, but, but I think it's also been important to have um, uh, gender diversity in the leads, uh, location diversity. Um, like I, I'm originally from South America. Uh, Yoan and Tammy are from Europe. Like I think it's. Um, I think this is very core to WordPress. Uh, both the the idea of an international internationalized community. I think it's important. The uh, hearing all those voices is important. Um, and yeah, if if uh, it's. A anything that can be done better, um, I think we should always be striving to uh, to improve that. I think I, I will plus one, and diversity isn't just a company. That's the really, really important uh, part as well. I also think that it's uh, good to look at what someone's done before they were in a company as well. There's a lot of people who've done background, but a, 
it's a lot of this is apparently I'm going to say the word seeds, but it really is that like we've seen people grow through Gutenberg outside of the people who are on the screen, like who have taken leadership and grown in ways where they weren't even involved in the community. And now they're leading voices in the community. Just because you're leading a focus doesn't mean you're a lead. Like there's so many leads, right? Like, uh, and I think that that, and there's so much role diversity. It's given people opportunities to really grow outside Again, developers are adorable, but just developers. So we've seen in core chats a, a different kind of voice be able to do that as well. Yeah, I think that the 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 JavaScript chats have also been a, a good example for me uh, because it it's a it's a nice mixture of people from different companies and uh, freelancers sort of pushing the boundaries forward. Like the Yoast people are very involved there and sort of driving a lot of the the decisions happening. So it's a I think it's it's a it's a time where more people can also rise up and and start to uh, take ownership of different areas um, because it's uh, even like Gutenberg is already too big for to be led by sing by individuals. It has to it it needs the help from everyone around it. So I think there's a lot of room to to occupy those places too. And yeah, I think we are running out of time now. Not I think, I know. But um, it, uh, so I think it's also a good place to, to stop this. And we have a few more questions, but I think they, um, I don't know if you want to stick around and answer that, or um, I don't know how you, yeah, it's already eight o'clock. <laughs> and can, can Joanne, you want to say something? The, the, the last question, just on a, on a personal level as well, I imagine I might also oh, echo probably. Tammy and Matthias here. Um, when I was asked to work on, on this project, I, I didn't do it because I thought it would be easy or, or pleasurable to do this or, or even because Automatic asked me to because I, I could easily say no to that. I did it because WordPress has been good to me and I want to try and give back to WordPress and I believe in Matthias' vision for this project. So that's why I spent the past two years pouring all this energy into the editor as did these two wonderful people as well and I would not have done that just because automatic asked me to this is because I love WordPress and and there's no other reason that could have driven me through our adventure here well thank you for your passion and that it almost reminds me of John F. Kennedy when he yeah. announced to the nation they were going to the moon um, in within the next decade, I said we don't do it because it's easy. We do it because it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> kind of that. Yeah. Um, I so, would say we're building rockets or landing people on the moon here, <laughs> but um, I, I do appreciate that quote. I think we need a rocket block. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. We need a rocket block with 15 different rockets. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think in closing, um, what is the 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 one feature that in Gutenberg that excites you the most? Um, just so for you personally, what you say, okay, well, this is really neat. Um, also, if you have something that you found around the, the ecosystem and plug, plugin, is there something that somebody really um, kind of blew you away and say, okay, there's a surprise thing that I didn't think of it, but that's well done. So I really like, uh the forward slash command. I think that's just so useful when you're writing that that just it's it's happy. I get uh, excited and surprised by so many things that people make and that this that point is amazing. I love the really like out there experiments all the funny things. Um, and I want to see more of that because that's how, how you push something like this is just by seeing if you can just do something experimental. So all of, all of those things I get really excited about. I love the reusable blocks that you can export as JSON and import as JSON. I think especially as phase two gets into gear, the ability to share preset layouts is going to be completely amazing. And also, I love that you can paste almost anything into Gutenberg and it works really well. You can even paste clipboard data and it uploads it as an image. Wow. Oh, I haven't tried that. I would do that. Yeah. Matthias? 
Yeah, um, just a, a quick one, maybe. I, I, it's, it's very simple, but I really like the galleries. Uh, it's like just laying one picture after the other so that you have two, two images has always been so difficult in, in WordPress. You had to, to know a lot of the underlying mechanisms. Uh, so I really like being able to just drag two pictures and set that layout very quickly. Um, so that, that's one of my, my favorite ones. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think we come to an end. And um, uh, thank you all for those wonderful questions. They were all very important questions. And I'm glad we have um, three voices on record for those questions so we can point to it. Uh, we will have a transcript <laughs> of this. So, and it will be on Gutenberg Times later uh, next month. Um, thank you so much to Johan, Tammy and Matthias for coming on on a Friday night on release day. It's very much appreciated. And uh, thank you so much and uh, good night. <laughs> thank you and thank everyone for the questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye.